Good evening. Good to see you tonight. I'm sitting here actually in my backyard on our swing, uh, listening to the birds and occasionally the wind chime when a breeze picks up. But I'm glad that uh, you can uh, join me through uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube, and I hope that uh, you've had a good uh, had a good Memorial weekend, and we're able to spend time uh, with family as well as uh, remembering and giving thanks for those who gave their lives uh, for uh, for us. I want us to uh, begin as we always do with a time of prayer, and we want to remember one another. We want to remember our our country, our nation, uh, our leadership. Uh, the families of those who have lost loved ones due to this pandemic, those who are uh, seeking to find ways to uh, develop medication uh, for its prevention, and um, as well as our leaders who uh, have to make decisions well relative to uh, uh, moving forward to some state of the new norm, whatever that might look like. Remember uh, our church leaders as well as we uh, do the same thing relative to uh, re-gathering at some point. Um, I'll be meeting with uh, uh, a small deacon group uh, later this evening at seven o'clock and uh, we'll be going through what surveys we have. We do have a good number of them that have come back and we'll be looking at the results of that and coming up with hopefully some specific recommendations for the entire deacon body at their June meeting. So be in prayer for, uh, for that process as well. Thank you again for supporting our church and being part of our family during this time and, and remembering uh, all of us in, in your prayers. It's uh, been very encouraging and of course it continues to be very, very important. So as we go to the Lord in prayer, remembering uh, those from our church family who have had some um, uh, medical issues over these past, uh, this past week and, and few weeks. We want to remember them. I won't use names because of the uh, public presentation of, of this video on YouTube and, and, and so forth, but um, uh, God knows who these folks are in our congregation and uh, you need to just remember them. So as we have a time of silent prayer, uh, let's do that and uh, those other requests that I shared and we will, uh, uh, I will close this in prayer in just a moment. Let's pray. Dear God, we offer you thanks for your blessings, for your care, for your love, for your patience, for your faithfulness, for your encouragement, and for the foundation you give us each day that helps us to stand and to be who you've called us to be. We thank you for our church family and for their faithfulness and their uh, perseverance during this time. And Lord, I pray that as we have discovered new ways to worship, uh, realizing that it's not as good as what was, uh, we know that we've been able to reach people who otherwise may never even enter the door of a building. So God, we give you thanks for that and pray that you'll be with uh, these new friends who have joined us and, and worship with us on Wednesdays and Sundays. Lord, we don't know who they are, but God, we, we consider them a part of who we are. So Lord, uh, uh, thank you for blessing us uh, with them as well as our, our uh, current uh, church family. Lord, we thank you for opportunities we have to uh, share in this way, in a different way, uh, in a more creative way. And even though it uh, can be a little tense, it's still uh, good to um, stretch ourselves out of our comfort zone and to do things that uh, are different and to do things that are um, perhaps a little um, easier to share in a more comfortable and relaxed way. So God, I, I thank you for that. Lord, we do pray for those who have been struggling physically, uh, some who have had procedures done over these past, uh, past week and weeks. Lord, you know who these people are. You know the, the issues they're struggling with, uh, the recoveries they're engaged in, and we pray your blessings on all of them as they uh, 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 seek to do what the medical uh, doctors and nurses have prescribed for them. 
uh, be it through medication or physical therapy. Uh, we just pray that you will give them courage and endurance and strength uh, and tenacity to follow the orders of the physicians and to uh, do what they need to do to become uh, restored. Lord, uh, we again, we pray for our nation. We pray for those who've lost family members due to this virus. We pray for um, our leaders as they try uh, to make the best decisions possible. And we know at best it's difficult, but God, I just ask that you uh, bless them and be with them during this time. Lord, guide and direct all of us as we seek to do again what is um, uh, pleasing in your sight and according to your will relative to our own church. And Lord, we just pray that uh, you will guide our thinking and help us to be intentional in our steps that, and the steps that we make uh, as we move forward. Be with us now as we share a few moments in your word. Uh, open our hearts and minds to receive what you have. And Lord, may it uh, be a blessing to us in Christ's name. Amen. I hope my air conditioner running does not uh, disturb too much from what we're trying to do here. Um, as we as we share these moments together, I'll pull this little microphone up a little bit. Maybe that'll help. Um, I want to uh, talk about something that most of us have experienced at some point in our lives. Uh, if we've been to the beach very much, even with our own kids. And that is uh, uh, something that we see with infants. But before I do that, I want to read a, a focal scripture for us to focus our attention on during these next few moments. It comes from Romans chapter 5, verse 3 through 5. Familiar passage. I've used it before, perhaps even since Christmas. Um, but anyway, that doesn't make any difference. We always hear something new when we read uh, from scripture. Romans 5, 3 to 5. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. How many times have we been to the beach and we're walking along and we see a mom or a dad, perhaps a grandparent, sitting in the shallow water as the waves come up. Their legs are kind of spread apart and in sitting between their knees is an infant. Four, five, six, seven months old, maybe a year old. But that child is, is there. Excuse me, I dropped my glasses. <clears throat> that child is sitting there screaming their heads off because the waves are coming up and they're hitting them and splashing on them. And the adult that's with them, parent, grandparent, is just sitting there. And the child is just screaming their eyes out. And if you're like me, the question has crossed my mind before, you know, how could a good parent just sit there and watch this child scream like that and not do anything about it? Obviously the kid's afraid. Well, even though their parents or, or grandparents are obviously loving and caring, and they're right there to protect their babies, they're not gonna let them get hurt. But I believe the reason they don't remove the kids from that source of fear is that they know something that the babies, the infants, are too young to understand. They know that that water is not gonna hurt that child in any way. They know that the fear that their babies are experiencing is completely unfounded and that um, the fear of the ocean would only stand in the way of their safety, their fun and joy in the future when they go to the beach. If they're afraid of the water, they will never get in the water, right? So it, it helps them understand that there is no fear. They know the only way to help them is to, to with that fear is to expose them to the water, the source of that fear. 
And so the parents sit there in the shallow water at the beach with their infants, oblivious, seemingly, to the screaming of the children. There are times, I think, that we are a lot like those infants at the beach. You and I have fears, a lot of fears, probably more than we should. Will we have enough money to retire? What do I do if something happens to my spouse? What will my family do if something happens to me? What would I do if this virus, if I contract this virus? What if I have the, I've contracted it, but don't know it? I'm asymptomatic and I'm passing it on to others because I'm not perhaps doing what I ought to do to prevent that from happening. How can I help others to see that their fear may be unfounded once I realize it myself? We've all been there. Many of us are there right now. And it may not just be this virus. It may be that coupled with uh, other issues and, and, and fears that we're struggling with in life. So how can you empathize with those babies at the beach? Well. We don't like what we see around us. We want to get away from the wind and the waves. We don't understand why God just doesn't pick us up out of the water and make us take us to safer, higher ground. Why didn't he just remove all of this stuff? Get us out of it. But the lesson I want to share with you tonight is that God really drives home for us is the lesson that he drives home for us as we sit screaming in the waves of fear and worry and doubt and apprehension and uncertainty and the desire to want to know. And that is this, that God our Heavenly Father knows that we're not in any real danger. If we follow Him and we do what we're supposed to do and we use our common sense. He's standing by to protect us from the really bad stuff that can happen to us and even to comfort us when we go through those things, when we're in, in the waves of the storm. He knows our fears will only stand in the way of living a productive and faith-filled life and will keep us from truly experiencing the freedom that we have and the joy that He desires for each of us. He also knows that in time, we'll learn to trust Him more during those, these waves of, of fear that we face. And so He allows us to sit in the water, as it were, of the trials that we face at a given time. Just like that parent allows that infant to sit there and let the waves hit them and splash them. Sometimes God does that to us, to teach us and to help us understand that He's there with us, even though He's not moving us, He's there. But all the time, protecting us with His arms around us, His hand upon us, ready to pick us up and move us, should a big wave come. You know, sometimes you can sit there in the shallow water with a child and the waves are just coming up and hitting them on the stomach or in the chest. But every once in a while, there's a, a little more aggressive wave that comes in. And if we're not paying attention, it could cover the child up. God's there. And when those waves like that come to us, He's there to pick us up and move us and to protect us from drowning in that fear. And you see that, my dear brothers in Christ, is why we can have confidence knowing that we can and will withstand any struggle or overcome any obstacle that we might encounter because of that protection. Remember the truth of the scripture I just read a moment ago that I read again in your hearing. Romans 5, 3 to 5. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts 
through the Holy Spirit who has given us, who has been given to us. So take a step back. Just take a step back. Have the courage to trust God who is right there to carry you through whatever. The valleys, remember those that we go through. Trust Him to know what's best for you. Trust Him to teach you the lessons you need to learn in life. Just trust Him. That's all He calls on us to do. Trust Him. Talked a lot about that. Because we need to hear it. Because unfortunately we forget. Just trust Him. Let us pray together. Father God, may I stop wishing away the trials of life. May I stop fearing them. May I put my faith in you and you alone, ever knowing that you will carry me through. And in the process, may I learn to trust you in your unfailing and everlasting love that you have for me. Be with us now as we go into the night. Give us a peaceful and restful night and wake us to a new day with new challenges to be the church in the, in the world. Thank you again for your love in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you again for being with us tonight. Don't forget, we'll be on again Sunday uh, on uh, YouTube. The link will be uh, sent out. We're going to try to do it on the new email. Uh, if, if you did not get one, I know several of you responded on the church's Facebook page. If you were one of those that responded that you did not get an email, would you please email Nell your new email address? That would be very helpful um, because the only one we've got is the one that didn't, evidently didn't work. So um, if you will just email her your new address, that would be, uh, that'd be great. And she can get that corrected and we can uh, attempt hopefully to email the uh, link to you. If we don't get to it this week, then since it's a short week, then we'll definitely be ready to do it um, the first full week of June. So thank you again. Watch on Facebook, uh, the church's page for the link this Sunday morning. And it'll be the last Sunday in the worship guide and new ones will be put together and we will be this time posting it only online except for those of you who uh, get the newsletter by mail, you will receive them in the mail, but most of you will have to go to the church's website and we'll give you instructions on how to do that um, uh, on Sunday for, uh, during the uh, worship Sunday morning. God bless you. Have a great evening. Be safe. Be uh, conscientious of your neighbor and uh, uh, take care of one another as we uh, continue to go down this road. and. Uh, We'll be at the end of it sometime. I'm confident of that. So uh, go in peace and rest and be, be patient and keep your focus and your trust on the one who is the creator of the universe, who knows everything that you need and when you need it. God bless you. Good night.